The movie is about a young boy named Vitus, who is a prodigy at playing the piano and doing mathematics. By the time he's six years old, tests have proven that he has an IQ of 180. His British-born mother, Helen, wants her son to become a famous pianist, and she drives him quite hard to practice all the time. Dad Leo is a bit of a wizard himself. He has designed a new type of hearing aid that is posed to lift up the financial fortunes of his company. Naturally, given the detailed work of the project, he has little time for his son. Not only does Vitus possess a highly advanced musical sense, but his sense of hearing itself is augmented, almost to bat levels. This is proven when, one day, he tries on the sensitive directional microphones in a headset developed by his father Leo, a hearing aid inventor. One day, Mama Helen is called to Vitus's kindergarten, where she's informed by the head teacher that her son is way ahead of the other kids in terms of studies. Given his exceptionally genius mind, Vitus finds it difficult to fit in with his classmates. The head teacher recommends Helen enroll Vitus in a boarding school instead of kindergarten. Just then, Helen gets a call from her husband Leo and learns that he got promoted at work due to his newly developed technology-friendly hearing aid. Rejoicing in happiness, Helen promises her son Vitus that he doesn't have to attend kindergarten anymore, as they will now have enough money to hire a private babysitter for him. Sadly, this is bad news for our young genius. He is constantly told what to do by his parents, who are mostly busy at work. Even as a young boy, he feels trapped at his home, not being able to play or act like a normal kid. The only wish Vitus longs to be fulfilled is for him to be like other kids. That night, his parents leave him with a new babysitter named Isabel, who is only a few years older than him. Vitus wants to be left alone, as he's already irritated by the fact that his parents do not have time for him. Regardless, sweet-natured Isabel sits by his side silently as he reads a bedtime story to himself. We learn that the boy's only refuge is his eccentric grandfather, the one person whom he fully confides in, the only one who gives the young Vitus the freedom and the space he needs to be himself truly, is his grandfather, who endlessly putters around in his tool shop and still nurtures a lifelong dream of becoming a pilot. In the next scene, we see Vitus and his grandfather getting ready for a house party. It is his father's party to promote the newly launched hearing aid. Vitus is too reluctant to dress up for the event, but gives in when his grandfather lifts up his spirit with some playful tricks. At the party, one of Leo's colleagues is skeptical about the new hearing aid. So, the colleague constantly ridicules Leo's work, confidently saying that the product will soon go down the market. However, Leo is optimistic, so he assures that the demand for the hearing aid will soon boost. The colleague goes on to doubt Vitus's piano skills. He picks up some sophisticated lyrics sheet from the boys' practice table and exclaims that Vitus wouldn't be able to play such a complex song. However, his doubt is cleared when Leo and Helen have their son play the piano and showcase his exceptional talent, despite Vitus's rebellion. In the next scene, the guests, including the mean colleague, watch our prodigy play the piano as they stand in awe. Later, one of the guests recommends Helen recognize her son's talent and foster his skills. He notes that Vitus is a special child, so he needs to go to a special school, such as a private music academy. Meanwhile, our little boy is tired of the unknown people surrounding him. He scoots under the curtain and hides away from the crowd. He then puts on one of his father's hearing aids, takes out his little binoculars, and watches the guests from his hiding place. He can clearly hear and see what people are talking about at that moment. Taking advice from their guests, Leo and Helen decide to enroll their son in a private music academy. Initially, the institution rejects the little boy, since he's too young to get admitted. But thanks to Vitus's exceptional piano skills, as well as intelligence, the school's administration decides to enroll our prodigy. Understandably, Vitus isn't happy about the decision. Later that night, he refuses to come out of his room as he wants his old piano teacher to continue giving him lessons. Once again, his mood is uplifted when he spends some quality time with his grandfather. At the old man's tool shop, the duo works on some furniture. Vitus's grandfather shares his dream of flying, 
or more specifically, being a pilot one day. They then make makeshift wings, which Vitus wears and plays around with. His grandfather also teaches him how to use a saw and cut wood. While Vitus is doing so, Helen suddenly appears at the scene and runs toward her child. Worryingly, she scolds Vitus for playing around with a dangerous tool such as the axe and asks him to never touch it. The poor boy sadly obliges his mother. As days pass by, Vitus is left alone with his babysitter Isabel while his parents are busy at work. Due to this, he grows a close friendship with the young girl, who dreams of becoming a rock singer one day. Most evenings, they spend dancing and singing around the house. Isabel with the mic and Vitus at his piano practice table, jamming his favorite tunes. One night, when the parents are late, Isabel and Vitus end up drinking a whole bottle of champagne, causing them to pass out. When Leo and Helen return home, they are shocked to find the kids in a drunken state. Consequently, Helen fires Isabel, the only friend Vitus had. This causes him to lash out as he throws books off the shelves out of anger. He also manages to lock his mother out when she goes to handle a delivery. Following this, Helen screams her son's name from outside the door, but Vitus wouldn't answer. Instead, he heads over to his practice table and starts playing the piano loudly. The little boy doesn't answer the door even when it's night and his father has arrived from work. Leo too tries his best to open the locked door, but to no avail. He yells at Vitus, but the little boy seems indifferent and continues playing the piano. The next scene abruptly skips to a few years ahead. Vitus is now 12 years old. He continues to be dissatisfied with his restricted and controlled life. He attends the equivalent of college and doesn't get along with either the students or his professors. Given his highly gifted intelligence, he ridicules his teachers to display his knowledge, making them look stupid. It often puts Vitus in trouble, but the boy doesn't seem to care at all. He is tired of the way he's been living for the past couple of years. In one such instance, where Helen is called in for a parent-teacher meeting to discuss Vitus's arrogance and highly gifted nature, the class teacher recommends Helen enroll her child in a special school. Helen knows her son is bored as he is not sufficiently challenged with a regular high school curriculum at age 12. But she and Leo also don't want to send him to one of those special schools, which she calls zoological gardens. So she doesn't take the teacher's advice, instead decides for Vitus to take the school leaving exams so he can join the university. In the next scene, Helen continues to torture her son by making him practice piano every day for hours. That too being against Vitus's will. It is evident that Vitus hates this chore of the day and only wishes to be normal like others, instead of being a piano prodigy. One day, Helen takes Vitus to meet a world-famous pianist named Gina. But the meeting doesn't go as planned when the young boy refuses to play in front of Gina, insulting her. Later, while on the way back home, Helen yells at her son for not obeying her orders and reminds him that there are a lot of kids who would do anything for an opportunity like this. Unwilling to continue with things as they are, Vitus devises a sly scheme that enables others to see him as a normal boy rather than as a prodigy. For this, he fakes a head injury by pretending to have jumped off the balcony with his grandfather's makeshift wings. Later on at the hospital, the doctors inform Helen and Leo that Vitus has suffered only minor head injuries at the moment, but they cannot be sure of the damages later on. Sometime later, Vitus regains consciousness and pretends that he has lost his memory. He even acts like he's forgotten how to play the piano, devastating his parents. Additionally, Helen is informed by the doctor that Vitus's IQ has dropped from 180 to 120, although his vitals are normal for someone his age. The doctor then recommends Helen give some time to Vitus for recovery. Consequently, Helen is upset that her kid is no more a prodigy while Vitus rejoices for being able to live a normal lifestyle, far from his parents' constant pressure to be perfect. All the pressure to perform has now vanished, and he is free to be his own creative self. He even makes a friend his own age. However, he misses playing piano, so he visits his grandfather's house. While the old man is out attending to the chores, Vitus plays the instrument he longed so much to play for a long time now. Unbeknownst to him, 
His grandfather learns about the scheme when the old man hears him play the piano. Thankfully, his grandfather promises to keep it a secret. As he spends his time at his grandfather's, Vitus learns that the old man's financial condition is weakening. Additionally, Vitus's father, Leo, is also going to be kicked out of the company since his hearing aid products are no longer the best sellers in the market. He has been incurring losses for some time now. In order to help his family with finance, Vitus secretly opens a brokerage account under the name of Dr. Wolf and invests in the stock market. With his intelligence and good market analysis, he amasses a fortune from it. The money allows his grandfather to purchase a flight simulator. Moreover, as the money earns more interest, his grandfather also buys a Pilatus P-6, a single-engine aircraft he always dreamed of flying one day. Sadly, on the other hand, Vitus's father Leo is fired from his company due to the poor midterm review. One day, Vitus runs into a pretty teenager at a music store, and he immediately recognizes her as Isabel. He pursues her, but she prefers someone older and sadly does not return his affections. Regardless, they exchange a bittersweet goodbye. Vitus is then suddenly called to the hospital, where he learns that his grandfather has been injured. Apparently, he fell when he was fixing his roof. But Vitus learns the truth that his grandfather actually fell while trying to fly his aircraft, which he swears to keep a secret from his parents. Sadly, the grandfather passes away from the injuries, although he manages to write a letter for Helen and the family. That night, Vitus also learns about his father's condition, so he decides to secretly help him. He hires an insider woman from the stock market and manages to buy his father's company, which has been facing losses. He uses his alias, Dr. Wolf, and purchases the firm with the money that his grandfather left him. Consequently, with the help of the insider woman, he manages to show that Dr. Wolf is none other than his grandfather, making his father, Leo, the new CEO of the company. The final scene of the movie shows Helen reading the letter left by the grandfather. After reading it, she and Leo finally learn the truth about Vitus, that he was so smart he fooled everyone, including his parents, teachers, and even the doctors. The old man begs them not to be angry at Vitus, explaining that it was a better way for the boy to escape from the world for which he is too intelligent.